Venus is the closest planet to the Earth. But you probably knew that, so here are 10 facts you probably didn't know about Venus. Oh, and make sure to stay to the end of the video to see if you won the $20 gift card from last video's contest. Welcome to On the Shoulders of Science. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about some awesome scientific facts and concepts in a fun, easy to understand way, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Venus, Earth's twin, the second planet from the sun named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty. Love and beauty. Venus must be such a serene and blissful planet, right? Right? Wrong! Right off the bat with fact one. This is why you click the thumbnail. Venus has more volcanoes than any other planet. Venus is one of the most geologically active bodies in the solar system, peppered with over 80,000 volcanoes. Venus has shield volcanoes, crown volcanoes, and even a type of volcano unique to Venus called the Pancake Dome. Scientists believe that Venus underwent a major global resurfacing event about 500 million years ago, when the volcanoes essentially went on a rampage, bringing up magma and completely renewing the planet's surface. Eruptions also spew out large amounts of carbon dioxide, explaining why Venus's atmosphere is almost completely CO2. And it was actually just confirmed a few months ago that there is volcanic activity on Venus today. But why are there so many volcanoes? Well, this is likely the result of a combination of many factors, including its rigid crust, the presence of mantled plumes, extreme heat from the atmosphere, and the absence of plate tectonics. On Earth, most volcanoes are found along tectonic plate boundaries, where magma can easily rise from the mantle. But on Venus, there are no tectonic plates, so volcanic activity is not confined to specific regions. Instead, it occurs all over the planet. Fact 2. Venus has the thickest atmosphere of any planet, or at least the thickest atmosphere of any of the four terrestrial planets. Venus is a rocky planet with a core, mantle, crust, and a separate atmosphere. So why is Venus's atmosphere so thick? Well, it's due in part to all of Venus's volcanoes. Volcanic eruptions in Venus's past led to the increase of a lot of CO2 in the atmosphere. And unlike Earth, Venus doesn't have any systems to cycle CO2 out of the atmosphere. And as Venus got hotter and hotter with all the greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, the heat coaxed the carbon out of rocks like limestone, breaking it down into calcium and carbon dioxide gas, CO2, which made the planet even hotter. And as the heat mixed with Venus's volatile compounds like sulfuric acid, it accelerated the breakdown of carbon-containing rock, creating a positive feedback loop of carbon entering the atmosphere and heating up the planet. And speaking of the atmosphere, fact number three, Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. I mentioned last video that Mercury isn't the hottest planet, despite being closest to the sun. It turns out that the volcanoes release so much carbon that it essentially turned the atmosphere into a thick, saturated soup of greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases absorb visible light and re-emit it as infrared light. Infrared light is easily absorbed by lots of materials, warming them up. That's why infrared light is often just called heat. So Venus has a runaway greenhouse effect, an atmospheric blanket that traps the sun's heat, making Venus, not the atmosphereless Mercury, the hottest planet, reaching over 475 degrees Celsius. Fact number four. Now you may have heard that a day on Venus is longer than its year. And that's true, Venus has the longest day of any planet, but only when measuring the sidereal day. Mercury actually has a longer solar day. Go watch my video on 10 facts about Mercury if you want to learn more, but essentially the sidereal day is the amount of time it takes for a planet to make one full rotation. And a solar day is the amount of time it takes for the sun to come back to the same position from the perspective of someone standing on the surface. Notice the difference. Now, with all the planets, you'll notice a trend. The sidereal day is quicker than the solar day, except for Venus. But why is this? Well, that brings us to fact number five. Venus spins clockwise around its axis, the opposite direction to all the other planets. But how does that explain Venus's solar day being anomalously longer? Well, let's look at an animation. If we look at Mercury, we can see that Mercury spins and orbits in the same direction, stretching out the length of its solar day. But Venus spins in the opposite direction, so we can see how this causes the solar day to be shortened. So why is Venus the only planet to spin clockwise? 
Well, no one is 100% sure, but the favorite explanation is that a long time ago, when the solar system was still forming, or in its very early stages, Venus was rotating the same way as all the other planets. Why were all the other planets rotating in the same direction to begin with? Well, that's a story for another time, but I will talk about it more extensively in the Uranus video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But anyways, at some point in time, Venus was struck by some massive rogue object that changed its angular momentum so severely that it actually started rotating slowly in the other direction, making Venus the only planet to rotate clockwise. Fact number six. Venus doesn't have a moon, and Mercury doesn't either for that matter. Every planet, including even lonely Pluto, has at least one moon. Now, the reason for this seems to be a little more straightforward. Mercury and Venus are the two closest planets to the Sun, right where the Sun exercises its strongest gravitational pull. Now, Earth is far enough away from the Sun that we can have a moon that stays locked to our gravity. The moon is close enough that it doesn't go wandering off, wooed by the forces of the Sun's gravity. There's a point known as L1, or the Lagrange point 1. It's the gravitational equilibrium point of the Sun and Earth. Objects on this side of the point are more influenced by the sun's gravity, and objects on this side are more influenced by Earth's gravity. Moons need to be well within that point to be stable satellites, so that they have no chance of being somehow gravitationally nudged or captured by the sun's gravity. And unfortunately for Venus and Mercury, because they're smaller and so close to the sun, their L1 points are much closer to the planets, meaning that moons would need to orbit exceptionally close to the planets to be stable just an unlikely circumstance. And speaking of what Venus is lacking, fact number seven, in addition to not having a moon, Venus doesn't have a magnetic field. And scientists aren't exactly sure why this is. Venus appears to be made of similar materials to that of Earth, and yet we have a magnetic field. It's possible that Venus's core, though iron-containing, may have different properties than Earth's, such as a lower fluidity or a different state of convection, which could hinder the generation of a magnetic field. It could also be that Venus's slow rotation doesn't provide the necessary conditions to create a global magnetic field. Fact number eight. Over the years, over 20 space probes have made their way to Venus, and of the ones that have landed on the surface, they've all essentially been melted and crushed by the immense Venusian pressure and heat. But among these probes was the Mariner 2, the first successful probe to document a visit to another planet, all the way back in 1962. Even more astounding news from the far reaches of space comes from Mariner 2, which roared off last August for its rendezvous with Venus. Almost precisely on schedule, the intricate communication system begins to pick up signals from our twin planet and relay them back to Earth. Its two sensitive electronic eyes scan the mysterious cloud-wrapped surface of Venus for the 42 minutes that they are near enough. Pretty cool. Fact 9. After the sun and moon, Venus is the brightest thing in our sky. Now, this isn't always true. As we move along through our different orbits, sometimes Venus is further away and is therefore dimmer, perhaps letting the still more distant but larger Jupiter to be the brightest. But when Venus is closest to Earth, it is the brightest thing in the night sky, save the moon. Depending on the time of year, you can usually see Venus in the early night, shortly after sunset, or just before sunrise. And finally, fact 10. The transit of Venus is one of the rarest regularly occurring astronomical events. The transit of Venus refers to when Venus passes directly between the Earth and the Sun, appearing as a small disk moving across the face of the Sun. This rare event occurs in pairs, with over a century separating each pair. The last two transits occurred in 2004 and 2012, and the next ones won't occur until 2117 and 2125. So if you've missed the recent ones, you might be out of luck to see the next one. But the transit of Venus is more than just a dot moving across the Sun. Scientists have historically used the transit of Venus to measure astronomical distances. By observing the transit from different locations on Earth and timing the duration of the transit, astronomers could calculate the distance from Earth to Venus and, subsequently, the distance from Earth to the Sun. And that concludes 10 facts about Venus. But if you participated in last video's contest, you might want to stick around. The challenge from last video was to comment a fact about anything in our solar system that I personally didn't already know. First of all, thank you to the 16 of you who submitted a fun fact. Now, thanks to all the research I did while writing the scripts for this series of videos, I've learned quite a few things about all the planets, so many of the facts I actually had heard of before. Which I think made this challenge, well, 
a challenge. And there was only one comment I didn't already know and that wasn't incorrect. And that was from Natty Storytime 9781 who commented that Neptune isn't actually dark blue, but instead is a pale blue very similar to Uranus. This information actually just recently became more mainstream, and I had heard of it, but I didn't know why. And that was to make the great dark spot, as well as apparently other clouds, bands, and winds, more visible to the human eye. So congratulations to Natty Storytime. Check the description to see how to claim your prize. I will reply to all the other comments as soon as the video goes up if you're wondering why I didn't choose yours. If you didn't win this time, make sure to check back soon. There will be another contest on the video on 10 facts about Earth, and there's another prize waiting there for you. I hope you all learned something, and I will see you next time for 10 facts you probably didn't know about Earth. Thanks for watching.